<laughs> hey everybody, Taryn Quintero here with Cosmetic Aesthetics. So it's been a while since I have made a video and I wanted to show you guys how I set up for a procedure. Well, I'm actually setting up today to do a pro cell microchanneling training. So I'm gonna set up for that, but I'm also gonna show you guys how to wrap your machines because I see so many people doing it wrong and it'll only take an extra minute or so of mine. So I'm gonna set up as if I were doing a tattoo for you guys, okay? So first things first, chairs. Okay, so there are tons of things that cover chairs. Um, just like there's tons of things that cover trays. I'm gonna show you what works for me. These are dry cleaning bags. I have skipped this step to save time, but I basically shimmy one on the end. I have to cut like an opening on one side of it so that it like actually fits over the metal bars and stuff underneath. And then I have one on the top. So there's two on here, okay? Whatever works for you is fine. These are medical sheets, hospital sheets, whatever you wanna call them. So they are absorbent on one side and they are poly or whatever that stuff is called, poly paper, poly something on the other side. So this is just like your dental bed that you'll use while you're working. And I put these over. Okay, and it's most important that you get, you cover, you know, the area where you're working. So, you know, don't care too much about their feet, but you do wanna, I wrap my chair extra well because I, I wanna protect it. I want it to last, you know, you can, um, obviously you gotta cab aside your chair afterwards and everything, but the, the less you have to wear it out, the better. Okay, so I tucked that into the back. Now I'm all set for that. So now I'm gonna wrap my lights, okay? So I use a combination of press and seal and barrier film when I'm wrapping my lights, okay? And you'll find what works for you, okay? So remember, things like hepatitis C, okay? That's gonna stay alive outside of the blood for two weeks. So it's really important that you wrap anything that you may or may not be touching during the procedure because you can try and sterilize things, you know, cavity wipe them, whatever, but nothing's 100% sterilized unless it's soaked in calvicide for three minutes or put in an autoclave, okay? So always remember that. Um, so I like to use barrier film around the cord, so I always move it from this area right here. For the little knobs and things that I may or may not touch during the procedure, I like to use the press and seal. So I rip off a little piece like that just big enough to cover this knob right here. Okay, so this is really the only the only knob that I touch that, and then obviously the um, the on and off switch, right? So just a little guy, just like that. Boom, now I'm all wrapped up. Now I may or may not touch right here, right, to move the lamp up and down. So I am going to wrap that and the press and seal makes that process nice and easy just gonna take a big old piece okay so now i am all wrapped with that light now this is a little valerie weber trick i'm going to take a shower cap now there's two different kinds of shower caps okay so don't make this mistake there's these kind, which I use when I'm working on blonde clients so that I don't get their hair covered in ink, okay? This is absorbent, so we don't really want to, but it doesn't have the plastic poly on the other side, so this wouldn't be appropriate to wrap your light with, okay? So I'm gonna use this plastic one, even though it doesn't absorb anything, but at least it'll protect, right? So usually I don't have a hard time getting this open, but of course, because I'm on camera, Okay, so I'm gonna slide it on so that it actually covers the on and off switch. Now, I do wanna say something because I know I'm gonna hear it. I am aware my nails are longer than they should be in this industry. I recently did a photo shoot uh, for a project that I'm working with, Saving the Wolves. Um, check out saveourwolves.org or .com. I don't know, Google Save Our, Wol Our Wolves and check it out. But anyway, so ignore my nails. And I also skipped a step. Normally, when I'm not on film and I'm in my element, before I start setting up, 
I'm gonna scrub my nails with my nail scrubber. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now since I forgot like a bad girl. And then I'm always gonna put my hair up, right? Before I do anything usually. And I just wanna say, I know a lot of people do have nails in this industry because there is no real regulation, at least in a lot of states. Um, but you know, my real nails get dirtier than my fake nails do. So I don't know about you guys, but scrub the shit out of your nails in between every client. You'll be fine. So I don't set up with gloves on um, when I'm loading the needle I do, but for everything else, I don't see the point. As long as I have clean hands, who cares? Okay, now I'll put my hair back. Let's pretend I did that in the right order. Allergy season here in Phoenix. Okay, back to the light. I've got my barrier film now, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap a little bit on the handle so that I can adjust my light while I'm working. Move it around. I'm gonna put one more on the base. Down here, just so that I can, I need to grab it there, okay? Next, I am going to get my trash bag. So when I'm wrapping my trays, now this is my, my work tray. So anything that I'm gonna be touching, working with blood, and um, it's gonna be here, okay? we should always have two work trays all right so this is my back work tray my work tray that's gonna have my bloody stuff on it this is a um, medical grade stainless steel it's surgical um stainless steel i can't talk today <laughs> i decided to make a video on the day i can't talk but anyway so you want to make sure that you have this okay you can get them on amazon you can get them on offer up craigslist just don't have a hair tray okay that's not sterile that's um that's a porous metal okay so you can never get that that's sterile. So I like to slide on a trash bag. Usually I have a little bit bigger ones, but I ran out. So I do that first. Then I have these medical pillowcases, which you can get off Amazon, just like I get the sheets. So they're just like a dental bib. You can also just put a dental bib right on top of that. Whatever works for you. So these have um, absorbed an absorbent side on the outside and the plastic poly stuff on the inside. And I'm just going to slide that right over as well. Okay. And I kind of slide it over so it's like nice and in the corner. Now I'm going to take some tape. And I've got these little tiny biohazard bags. Now every state's different. I know some people get charged depending on like the weight of their biohazard bags. I don't. I just have pickups, um, you know, certain times a year. And... So for me, I have these little biohazard bags I like to hang right here so that I don't have to worry about touching anything. I just throw my dirty rags and stuff right in this trash bag. And then at the end, it's got this little fold over like those lunch bags we used to put our sandwiches in as kids. All my stuff goes in here and I'm gonna film my cleanup later today as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, and that just makes for one easy, this just goes in my bigger biohazard bag. That's an easy cleanup in my opinion, but I know that won't work for everybody. Some people have to, you know, only throw, uh, where did my tape just go? Only throw away their, um, really? Oh, two right here. <laughs> Some people only have, like throw away their rags and stuff that, you know, has blood on it and then everything else they throw in a separate trash can because they get charged by weight, but. All right, so I tape that right on there, and that also stabilizes my, my pillowcase from moving around. Okay. So pretend, get our, so I'm gonna get out like, as if I was doing a real procedure, like I said. 
So on my back work tray, which I'm not going to touch anything during the procedure unless I de-glove on this back work tray. Okay, so I start out with just a little dental bib. I've got my apron back here. I've got my ProCell device, which I've got to wrap still. Okay, so I'll show you guys how I do all that. Let's get my face mask out. Okay, so this is my membrane mixed with um, just water. It's membrane tonic. That's what I use during procedures. I replaced green soap with the tonic. So just in case I need to re-wet my wipes while I'm working, I have usually pre-wet them. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that in case I need to use that. Now let me show you guys how to wrap your ProCell devices and your tattoo machines. Okay. So, battery out of here. Okay, so what I love about ProSol, you guys can message me for details later if you're interested, is that it is cordless. So I plug the little battery in. These are just called um, spray bottle bags, believe it or not. So these actually would cover that, but I use the press and seal. So I'm just gonna slip this right on in here. Now, when I'm ready, my tip will just pop right over that. So any pro cell people, it's really convenient. You don't have to cut a hole in it or anything. It just pops right in. I'm gonna take some of my grip tape. Now, for those of you who have the MD device, I know some every now and then the batteries kind of feel like they're gonna wiggle off because that thing is so strong. So if you kind of wrap it like so, it actually is uh, killing two birds with one stone. It's going to help you hold your battery in. Okay. Okay, ProCell device is wrapped and ready to go. Let's wrap the, uh, what should I call it? My Zion. How many Zion users we got out there today? Okay. So this is a cord sleeve. Those are some ruined tweezers now. So for some reason, these ones came like attached at the end. I've never bought them like that before, but so see my little nifty trash bag, just ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna always have out little finger condoms. Now don't make fun of me. These ones are like one size too small, so I struggle putting it on. <laughs> um, they do come in different sizes. Okay, get out my microblade. Oh goody, my phone just decided to restart itself. So I always get out a wax stick. Um, I use this to put Vaseline on the bottom of my pigment caps to hold them down. I also use it to scoop out my membrane, I use the other side so I'm not cross-contaminating, scoop out my membrane and put it into these little containers, um, to-go containers, glee bags. Okay. So, got out my ink mixer. Now, this is always gonna go in my back tray, okay? I am never going to stop what I'm doing, add more pigment to a dirty, already used cup take this and then stir because if that splatters, I've just now contaminated this and I can't put this in an autoclave. Okay. The best I can do is wipe this down. So if I need more pigment at any time, I'm going to get out a brand new cap, put it out and put new pigment in it. Okay. And that way I'm never like going to contaminate this. So this is always going to stay on the back work tray. I've got, this is really cool. I found this on Amazon. So this is my little mag um, lamp to check my needles, make sure they're all good to go. If you guys aren't eye looping your needles, you could be working with dirty needles, faulty tips. You could scar people, lots of things. This one has three magnifying things and a built-in light. Love it. Um, that's going to go on the back tray as well. I've got my Daria Chepri's um, autoclavable microblading hand tool that is going to go here. Okay, so now let's wrap our Zion. Okay. So I usually get the extra long cord sleeves. These ones are kind of medium, but 
I just have to be extra careful with them. So I'm gonna slip that on over here. Now I see a lot of people wrapping your cord and then still holding your machine. That's completely pointless. That's protecting your cord, big whoop. Now, yes, you can autoclave this. So if you have an autoclavable machine, that's awesome. This grip actually comes off and that can go boom right in my autoclave. But um, I know a lot of people don't. They also have the disposable grips now, which is really cool. They just came out with them. So I'm gonna fold the, the cord slip over and then here's where the fun part comes in. Oh. Oh, it wasn't so bad that time. Gonna slide that on. And now when I need to put needle in, I need to be able to get it in. So I'm gonna cut a little hole just like that. I don't usually struggle this much, but of course, cause I'm on film. So just cut a little hole out and make sure it doesn't go inside. Okay, just like that. Now I can fit my cartridge in super easily. And once I have that cartridge in, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap with the tape, with the grip tape. And that is the Zion. Okay, that's step one. Now let's, we gotta take care of this guy, right? Right here, it's caught in my machine. So this is my critical atom power supply. And for that, I use something called a uh, machine slip or a tattoo device cover, things like that. Um, you get them on Amazon, you can get them from tattoo companies, where to go. This one's a little bit small, you can get them a little bigger, but it fits perfectly on my critical atom. So that's step one. Step two is just a little barrier film just to ensure extra protection. Now that's, if I need to touch that, I usually use my foot pedal I shouldn't even need to touch that regardless, but if I need to adjust the speed or anything. So there you have it. I've got everything. I usually have my little, you know, rags out. Um, I'll have my needles out here, but as you can see, nothing on here is, is everything on here is either wrapped or disposable, right? So here's our disposables or autoclavable. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if I missed anything else. So I, again, at no point in time am I going to be touching anything back here unless I have degloved. Um, this is my back work tray. This is my regular work tray. I think that's it, guys. Um, stay tuned for my cleanup, okay?